Hello there. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Amy Lutsky, and I'm here today with members of the Friends of Kohler Andre State Park. We have Mary Lutsky across from me, Ted Bergstrom, and Mary Colchin, and they are all members of the Friends organization. We're going to talk a little bit today about what this group is and what they do and some things that they need from um, interested parties. So um, the first questions that I have is, where is Kohler Andre State Park? Um, is it popular? How many people come there? Well, I'll answer that. Uh, Kohler Andre State Park <coughs> is on Lake Michigan. It's uh, directly south of the city of Sheboygan. And um, it is a very popular park. Uh, we have camping and hiking and swimming. We have fishing. Um, we have many different activities. Um, and last year, over 470,000 people visited our park. So it is extremely popular. Um, and uh, we had visitors from all 50 states and from foreign countries. Wow. So that tells you what our park is all about. <clears throat> so, well, now um, a little bit about what the Friends Group is. What, what does the Friends Group do? Um, who are you? Folks, are you paid or volunteers? So the Friends Group is a nonprofit organization. It's a 4013C. 501. 501. 501C. 501C. And it was established in 1989. Yeah. Uh -huh. And originally uh, members of the Audubon Society in Sheboygan County came forth and wanted to establish the group. Um, so to become a member, you pay a small annual fee, um, $20 uh, a year to belong. So some of our members are simply donate to the organization because they love the park. And then other members are very active volunteers. We have a board and we have about 100 members. Um, Originally, our main task was staffing the Nature Center for visitors coming in and asking questions about the park, but we have expanded well beyond that. Um, we have tackled things like installing a fishing pond at the park, and we keep it stocked with fish every year. Um, we helped build the accessible cabin that's enjoyed by visitors from May through October that come and camp where traditional camping might be challenging. Um, some of our ongoing projects are bird seed at the park bird feeders, so you can come into the office and enjoy the birds up close. We supply um, fees for speakers that come and present during the summertime. We sponsor a concert series in the summer. We buy the food for the critters we keep at the nature center. So our projects can be very small to being very large. What kind of programs do you offer out at the park? Well, a lot of the programs that are done out at the park are done by master naturalists, which we do have a training session every year at the park by other master naturalists. And this is like a 40-hour program or more. And then they get a certificate. But some of the uh, programs that we have are... Um, we offer hikes or walks, and uh, they focus on birds or flowers or trees, and these are usually done by master naturalists. We also have the music programs in the summer, usually once or twice a week. Uh, usually on Wednesdays, we bring in a group from the of surrounding area, and then they will put on a music program. Usually it's done at the amphitheater, but if the weather doesn't cooperate, then it goes to the nature center. Um, we also have um, uh, a fish clinic every year, uh, the beginning of June, and we put this on for kids. It's a educational as well as free fishing, and they can bring their own equipment or we will provide it for them, and that's a very popular thing also. We also have a group that comes from Milwaukee and does Shakespeare in the Park every summer, which is also very well received. Um, I guess, uh, let's see, what else do we do? 
Uh, I understand um, Halloween's kind of a special time at this park. Can you tell us a little bit about what happens out there on Halloween? Yes, uh, Halloween is very popular. We're already getting questions or you know requests. When is this going to be? It's always the last Saturday in October. And it's done by the campers in the first camping unit at the park. And they decorate their campsites and Halloween things. They hand out treats. And they just get a tremendous, tremendous following by that. So it's a very, very popular thing. And this is then we have to coordinate with the law enforcement to have parking and keep things in order and all of this. But it's really a fun thing. The kids just love it. Another one that we really have, I think, is neat is when we have in the Nature Center, we've, another program we paralleled was taxidermy to actually have the wildlife of Wisconsin on display for the youth and the adults to see. And of course, people keep coming back to our park year after year, so we have to keep updating this. And we're, in the, we're in, going into phase two now of replacing animals, putting new animals in there. And that's very popular. There's also an insect collection. And they have bugs, snakes and turtles and things like that. So we try to make it interactive for the children. And the adults, when they come back, they're going to see uh, something new and something exciting. So I, I, I really think that's alive and very well done. So it's worth your time to take a trip out there and see that. The other thing is lots of our volunteers have to volunteer on this program or it wouldn't work because these events don't just happen without some volunteers coming up to supervise, chaperone, or just answer questions, or maybe we're serving refreshments. So that's the friends group that has to cover that when we do those kind of activities. Right. And so some of our volunteers are out there mingling with the public all the time. They're answering questions. They're telling our visitors how to find their favorite restaurant in town, how to get to the library. It, it's bigger than just the park. But we have volunteers who work behind the scenes. So, for example, on Friday mornings from fall into spring, we have a group that comes together and they restore our picnic tables. So we have some of the nicest picnic tables in the park system. Um, they built a, bat, a large bat house in the past. They make um, kits for our Bluebird workshop that's coming up in March. Um, other different maintenance projects. So if mingling with being out there with the public isn't your thing, but you have a talent for working with wood, um, uh, talent working with concrete, different interests, or you'd like to learn how to do some of those skills, you are more than welcome to come and join our Friday, Friday group. You will learn so much participating in that group. So um, I have a question about why volunteers are having to do all of these things for a state park. Isn't the state providing funds to pay people to do this kind of work? Unfortunately, they're not. Uh, in our last um, governor, he cut the funds that went to the state parks, so it made the budgets all the tighter. Basically, what the state does for us is they will take care of the buildings that are there. They will put a roof on it. They will replace windows. They will put in doors. Um, they will paint. Uh, take care of the plumbing fixtures, showers, and stuff like that. They will maintain the grass and weed control, but that's about where it ends. It's up to us for the friends and funds that we raise to cover the rest of it. Now we do, you say, well, look at all the money you get back from, ta from camping. It goes to Madison. We don't get it all, all back. Luckily, we're one of the heavier used parks at almost a half a million people. So we get a fair amount, but we don't get it all back again. So that goes somewhere else into another park that needs it. So that limits some of our funds drastically. That's why if we want amenities for you people to come back here, we have to keep working behind the scenes to create new things because the state does not look for new things to do. They'll maintain what we have, but if it's looking for a new horizon, no, they're not interested. Interesting. So you have a current project that you are planning for and raising funding for right now. What, what is that project? 
Mary. So our big project for 2020 is we would like to replace our playground. Our playground equipment was installed 30 years ago and it is starting to reach the end of its uh, life cycle. Um, and we have thousands of children that come every summer and we do not want to be the park without a playground. Um, we could simply remove it and that um, amenity would be gone, um, but we know how much children and families plan their trips specifically to our park because we have this extra feature. So we have started raising money to replace a playground. Um, our goal is $120,000 um, for that area. Right now, our focus is on the play structure and that would include the jungle gym, uh, swings, tire swing, some other equipment for children to play on. And that's about $65,000 to get that part replaced. Uh, the installation and the removal of the old equipment is included in that. Um, but the $120,000 would be installing a surface that makes the playground more friendly for all users. So if someone is using a cane, a walker, a wheelchair, they'll be able to get to the playground e equipment and participate with their, with their friends and family. Um, we're also looking to redo the path that goes from the parking lot to the playground. We have a path, it's a little narrow and lumpy and it is also sort of reaching the end of its, its life cycle. Um, so we've kind of put it into phases with playground equipment number one, um, surfacing and pathway coming second, and we'd also like to improve the seating in that area too. I think that's important to do the seating part because people come down there and just watch the little kids play. And if you're walking from the lake all the way back to campsite, it's a nice place to stop and rest. So if you sit down there and just enjoy yourself and enjoy the kids, that's the last stage, but it, yet it makes it so warm and comfortable to stop there. I would just like to comment on that playground <clears throat> being such an integral part of the park because as a person who's camped there my whole adult life practically, bringing my children there and now my grandchildren there, um, that is something that they just love because when you're up in the campground and you're doing your thing with you getting meals ready or whatever and the kids are just kind of bugging each other, it's fun for them for us to say, hey, you can go down to the playground. Uh, you know, the older ones watch the younger ones, but it's kind of a thing that, oh boy, we get to do something on our own kind of thing. And that really makes for a lot of memories and families. And that's what we're looking to do with replacing this playground is create more memories for children and for families that they will say, hey, I remember when I did this. My two granddaughters, when I talked about removing the playground, they said, oh my gosh, Grandma, you can't get rid of the tire swing. That was the memory that they had that was so important to them. So I promised them we would put up a new tire swing. Right, and some of our equipment will make it easier for everyone to play. We will have a few swings where if you have trouble with your upper body support, one of our swings will help hold you in so that you can swing just like your friends. Um, we're also going to have a swing where children and a, a parent and a small toddler can swing together on the same swing. Um, our playground will have transfer spots so that if you are using adaptive equipment, the pathway will take you to a transfer spot and then you can also get into the play structure and, and participate with your brothers and sisters or the new friends that you meet at the park. I'd like to add to what Mary just spoke about her, her, her grandchildren liking this. I asked my two sons last night when I talked to them, what do you remember about the park? And Tyler says, we used to make that uh, thing that you'd walk on. It was like, a, like you're walking over water. We would jump on that thing and see if we could go to, get it to go up <laughs> instead of down. And I said, well, that was a memory that they had. And I guess that's all what it's all about. You want your kids to say, that was fun because they'll bring their kids back. And my kids are 48 and 50. And we occasionally drive out there just to see what's in the park. And, oh, that swing is still there. No, we're about to replace it. <laughs> yes, and um, 
I have memories of that playground as well. And um, in bringing grandchildren there a few years ago, sort of the aging nature of this was brought to mind when one of them ended up with a big sliver in his foot from yeah. the peeling wood. So what kind of materials is this new playground going to be made out of? And who are you working with in, in terms of getting this, these ideas about how you, these transfer sites and these special swings and how did you find out about all of this? So we are working with Lee Recreation. It's a company in Wisconsin and they sell the playground equipment made by Burke Manufacturing in Fond du Lac. So last winter, Mary and I took a trip to Fond du Lac and did a tour of their company and saw how it is produced and they showed us the different safety features. They've been in business for a very long time and their equipment is sold worldwide. Uh, they do many of the playgrounds that our local school system use. And so we found them to be the company we wanted to, to go with. Some Wisconsin of, made. Right. And some of their parts are made uh, by Dutchland Plastics in Oostburg, the plastic parts, and they use metal things, and there's all warranties on them. And uh, so it's, it's a good company to work with. So, yes, the wood will be disappearing, so hopefully no more <laughs> slivers, and the new playground will be lots of different plastic and metal components. Mm -hmm. uh, what we, I think's neat about this company is that we can do this in phases. As our money becomes available, you can keep adding on. We've looked at numerous playgrounds in the area, and there's every imaginable thing you could put into this thing, so you could keep adding on for... 10 years if you want to, if you want to have that big a playground because there's that many choices. So we're trying to find the most popular things that kids like to use and then put it in there in phases. As we get the money, we'll add another unit. We get a little more money, we'll add some more. So it will be in progress. So once you donate, you can come out and see what we have. The first will be there this spring, the first part of it. And then you can come back, well, let's see how they did. And you can come back in the fall and see if it, or the next year. It'll be a work in progress. Yeah. So right now our playground plan that we have should feature 29 different play elements. Wow. Okay. Um, all folded into this jungle gym type one structure. Of, one of the other users of the park besides we spoke of camping is obviously picnickers come out there in the summer. We have just local people just come out there for the day. We have school groups, a lot of school groups come out. Busloads of kids come to the park as their field trip day. So what, they go through the nature center, they do a couple other things, and then they're turned loose on the playground. And of course they're supervised, but that's the fun part. We can just run and do whatever. We don't have to be, it doesn't have to be constructive. It's just kids playing. Can you tell me a little bit about, or describe a little bit for our viewers, what the area around the playground is like, what kind of makes that special in terms of the kids being able to go there and hang out? Well, it's down at the south end of the park. It's uh, kind of between the campground and the beach area. Uh, there's a parking lot that comes down there, so there's easy access to it. Uh, it's a sand base, and uh, it is... Uh, on the south end of it, there is a, a forest or um, pine trees and things, and there is also a trail that goes off from the campground through the forest. So that's just in a nice open area. There's also like a baseball diamond right there, and there's uh, they put up nets for uh, volleyball and things like that, in, all in that area. So it's it's the area of park that's kind of pretty open, and uh, it's very very easy to get to. But not being right on the water, parents Correct. can feel Absolutely. comfortable yes. um, that yes, it their is kids not... are not going to be, you know, running off into the lake. Right. Because you, you, there's the big sand dune, isn't there, it, that, that exactly. blocks the view. So. Right, yeah. So it, it's kind of sheltered from the lake, too, as far as the, if there's a cold wind or something. But, yeah, it's in a nice sheltered area, but it's very accessible. So It's very open. There's not a lot of trees around it, so when you're, if you're seeing there, you can see everything that's going on. So if you're somebody that's a little more concerned about what the activity is, go sit 100 yards away and, and talk to your friend, and the kids are still there having a good time. There's no worry. So 
how are you um, planning to raise the money for this project? What kinds of activities do you have? Um, how can people who are interested contribute to your group? Well, we have, we are writing some grants. We have some things out there reaching out to some of the local uh, charitable foundations. And we are also, um, you can uh, send a check to Friends of Kohler Andre State Park at 1020 Beach Lane, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and just mark it for playground. And uh, you also can, uh, there are envelopes with uh, information at the park office. You could go and pick up one of those. They have them inside, and if the park office is closed, they have some outside in the little box where you can get one. You can fill it out and turn in your money there, or you can take it home and think about it, talk to your family and friends, see who might want to contribute, put all your checks together, send them out. Uh, you also can donate on our Facebook page. We have a very active Friends of Kohler Andre uh, Facebook page, and there's a donate button on there, and you can make your donations that way. Um, so there's lots of different ways to help us. You can also do it even if you don't go out there yourself, but you have friends or family that do enjoy it, you can donate in, in memorial to them. Uh, you don't have to be involved in it yourself, but it can be in memorial to some a family member, or a relative, and it's here, still get to us, and it'll still help the cause. Right. So at this point, we have raised about ten thousand dollars towards mm -hmm. this project. Um, our first phase was purchasing a six-bay swing set, and we were able to do that this fall with funds raised from the sale of firewood and ice and other souvenirs that visitors like to um, purchase and take home to remember their trip to Kohler Andre, and with a match grant from the state Friends of Wisconsin State Park. Um, so we have, our first steps have been put into place. We have our first piece of equipment. We'd like to make the rest come true, hopefully in 2020. I think you just have to come out and see the progress because we intend to keep working on this, and each time you come out, you'll see it and say, I want to be part of that. This is going to be pretty cool when we get all done. Yeah. Um, so I understand that you also are interested in additional uh, committee members and volunteers. Um, if people are willing to step up and um, support the Friends of Kohler Andre in those ways, um, what's the best way for them to do that? So they can reach out to us. Um, they can give the park a call, and they'll put you in contact with us. You could also send us an email. Um, our email right now for this project is K-A-S-P fund, F-U-N-D play, P-L-A-Y at gmail.com. And we'll get back to you. We're looking for experts in marketing, um, some clerical tasks, anyone who has expertise on perhaps a fundraising sign, a thermometer, and then of course a permanent sign. We are open to your ideas and your talents that you can share with us. That sounds like a great opportunity and for And even people. if people are not interested in working on the playground project, we welcome people to help us with any of the other things that go on. We are always looking for people to staff the nature center. And there's just many, many opportunities there for people to come out and get involved, whether you want to work a little bit or you want to devote a lot of time. Right. We, we really would welcome any people to join our organization. Some volunteers <coughs> just volunteer once a year at a special event. Um, or maybe once every couple of years to celebrate uh, an anniversary or bring their scout group or they want their children to participate in an activity with giving back. Other volunteers are there weekly. Um, there's something for everyone. I think you have to look at what your passion is. I'm on two committees, the taxidermy committee to get some real life animals in the nature center and the playground equipment. That's what I'm interested in. That's where my effort will go. But you out there may have something entirely different that you are interested in. You might just like to garden. 
and just want to take care of that because you love to take care of your flowers. Come on, talk to us. We need somebody to take care of flowers too. There's all kinds of these. Tell us your passion. We'll see if we can find a place. Is there a more beautiful place to volunteer your time? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think. When I was younger, I used to ride my bike out there all the time. Well, now I usually take the car. But it is the most beautiful place. You drive into that park, and somehow you just relax. It's just beautiful out there. I left and went to Minnesota twice, came back to Wisconsin, and both times I came back to Sheboygan. Kohler Andrew Park was part of the reason I came back, because it was always peaceful and restful out there. We have a little bit of time left. Um, is there anything else you want to make sure that our viewers know about the Friends Group and your current projects? We do put on a lot of hands-on programs throughout the summer. Uh, we do something called fish printing, and the kids just love it. We have uh, white bandanas, and they can make the print of a fish on there, and they use them for little flags in their campsite or at home or whatever. And now adults have been coming to this also, and they bring T-shirts, and they want to put a print of a fish on a T-shirt. and So that's very popular. We do that about four times during the summer. Uh, we also have uh, uh, something called um, uh, the owl pellets. They dissect owl pellets and see what's inside the owl pellet to see what that owl has been eating. And there's so many different programs like that. Last summer we did one called Under the, Under the Water or something like that, and kids came with nets and they dug down into the muck in the uh, marsh area, and then they would examine what kinds of things they found in there. Sometimes it was just weeds or things or shells or little bugs or something. So we have a lot of hands-on programs. In fact, we have programs every single week out at the park, and we have a published list, and I also publish them on the Facebook page. So it's... Um, it's a pretty active park, that's for and, sure. And it's free. The, the only cost is having your park sticker. Right. You know, come check us out for the day and buy a daily pass or get an annual sticker and you can explore all of the Wisconsin State Parks. But once you're in the park, these wonderful programs that Mary was talking about, there is no fee. Correct. So some families come every week to do um, one of our activities and then oftentimes the campers, it might be their annual event, their annual family vacation, and they get to hop in and join us for one or two programs. One yes. quick thing we also do is we make kites three, three yes. times a year. Now that does cost you the price of the kite, but it's great. I love to encourage kids in art. That's all I do is encourage the art, good, bad, or indifferent. All I do is encourage them. What a wonderful place to fly a kite. Exactly. Yes, it is. <laughs> Well, I think our time is up. We want to thank our viewers for um, watching this show. And uh, the information about the Friends of Color Andre is uh, on the screen, should be on the screen, their uh, website, their Facebook page, and how you can get a hold of them. So thank you all for being here today and sharing your information with us.